Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now at this moment, at this present moment in time. Stop what you're doing and go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. Share us too with your friends. Don't just be all selfish with our content. Let's go ahead and share us with everybody you know. Because what we're doing, we're doing it for everybody in this world to help and motivate and educate the people out there. But don't forget, like, subscribe, especially if you want to see our full-length interviews, check it out on Patreon and on our YouTube membership. Go ahead and sign up for us because that's that's what going to make us keep doing what we're doing, y'all. Man, hold up, man. Hey, I'm back in the building, man. I mean, you know, uh, we are loving the movement of Boss Talk 101. We get some of the dopest people in here. Some of these guys, y'all, hey, listen, man. Y'all don't know what they story going to be like, man. So y'all be in for a surprise. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in right now to that uh, Little Soldier Slim that, that dropped this morning or did dro drop a while ago, actually, man. Uh, just want to say, man, I uh, hope you guys is liking the movement call. It's going down, man, in the dirty south. Check it, man. I got a guy here today. You don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man. Listen, man. World-class strength conditioning coach, trainer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this guy right here don't work with Earl Spence for show. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So I had to get him in, in here with the time and the way it is. People, you know, everybody got questions about what happened. I think this guy right here could at least enlighten me on some things that uh, uh, that he, the way he prepares different people. You know what I for mean? Sure, for uh, sure. When they're getting ready to go into certain situations or life, you know, right. health, well, well, health when you, is wealth. Wealth is health. Health is wealth. Both of them. Mm -hmm. It goes together. That's so right. with this guy right here, man, you listen, man, you, I start tucking my stomach in when I seen the nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, this nigga gonna judge me. You know what I'm saying? Don't judge me. You Don't know what I'm saying? Don't judge him. I can help you. Well, I'm just saying, I, I was holding my stomach in the whole time. If I release it, I might push this whole table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Blue Ray is in the building, man. Yeah, what's good? What's, what's good? going on, baby? I'm blessed, my brother. I'm blessed. Man, you don't be watching Boss Talk. You you know, like everybody said they watching Boss Talk. Where the hell Boss Talk come from? You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, what's good, man? Man, I don't know it, man. I be trying to chill, man, but I be cutting up at the same time. I've been doing this my whole life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, man, sir. Man, thank you for coming on the show, bro. Nah, I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all for having me. Man, I can't wait to get into it, man. Yeah, uh, Mr. Maker, what you yeah, going to do? Yeah, before the fitness, I want to know you growing up as a child. So, you were raised in, here in Dallas? Yeah, Holland Hills. Holland That's Hills. I'm from Holland Hills. Gator man from Holland Hills, yeah, for man. Sure. Yeah, for sure. That's my boy right there. You yes, know what sir. I'm saying? Yes, he showed up a rabbit. I'm talking about the music. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Were you raised with your parents, mom and dad, or single household? Well, my parents ended up divorcing when I was a kid. And How then, old? Ooh, I don't even remember. It was okay. I you was were that, real young. Yeah, Before I was 10? Just, oh, yeah. I was like maybe like two or three. Oh, I was oh so you don't even yeah, remember. I don't even remember at all. Okay. And then um, my dad got custody. Mm. And in the process of my dad having custody, we stayed with him until the, uh, you know, but we was always back and forth and my grandmother was in Holland Hill. So every weekend we was always at her house. And but then I got to put a pin right there because that's kudos to your dad, because a lot of times I people sitting in that seat and tell me it's always with their mom. They're always that's who always get the custody. The dad yeah. always just leaves and go lolly to his own life and do exactly. whatever he wants, whatever. So I had to stop you right there to say kudos <coughs> to you to your dad to take on that role yeah. to take you. Was it you by yourself? Or no, you me and my brothers. It was three of us. Wow. And that's one thing three I've always us. said as I got older and understood certain things and I've even said it to my husband, I always believe that when boys reach a certain age, they need to be with their father. For sure. Not with, because a mom can't teach the boys how to become yeah. a man. Exactly. But it is very detrimental for the boys to be with their mom in the earlier stage to teach them how to be um, caring, nurturing towards women and stuff like that exactly. because men who just raise boys from birth and no female involvement, they too hard. Yeah. They don't know how to, you know, touch in that other side of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, you got grandma, <laughs> you got you got Annie's Annie. No, be, but I'm talking Annie any be female drinking beer and bottles around the house when uncle because God has a way of filling those voids. For sure. You know what I mean? So but he you need a female. I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying there is a female there. The sister, the Annie, the cousin, somebody gonna come over there. Yeah, for sure. For smoking sure. cigarettes. 
sitting on the porch. <laughs> Give me a hug, boy. I don't want to. Sm she smell like cigarettes. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Ain't yeah. in them play a part, man. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so how was it? You know, being raised. I know you say you were back and forth with your dad and your grandma, but yeah. Um, so you didn't go stay with your mom at all? No, not at all. No, Why? not at all. Uh, that's something you have to talk to her about. I have no idea. So do you have a relationship with her? We cool. We we cordial. Yeah. Okay. Have I, ever... I, didn't, I didn't establish that until, she, until I was like 26. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she lived close by? She didn't live well, far? Well, she, she was always, so when we were younger, she was always in the city. Mm -hmm. But I can't explain why she wasn't active. I had, mm -hmm. You know, I have no idea why she wasn't. She was, you know, we would see her maybe once a year, something like that. And then um, I think I think I was like twelve or something like that. She had started dating some guy. She had asked us for permission. She was like, "Do y'all do you mind if if I move to Houston?" I was like, "I ain't tripping." You know what I mean? Oh. But because at the end of the day, my grandmother was my mother. Yeah. You know, because I you know we ended and up. And you weren't seeing her very often. I wasn't anyway. seeing her, so there was really no emotional attachment anyway. You know. Did you feel like there? I know you said grandma was your mother, but did you ever feel like any void was missing because? She's I, she's still not your mom. No, for sure. I, honestly, I didn't. You did. Honestly, I never. It's kind of like one of those situations you don't miss what you never had. Mm. It's something I never had, so I never knew that I was missing it. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've gotten older and became a man, I can understand the aspects of not having my biological mother there. I can understand how it affected me as I've gotten older. But when I was young. I didn't understand at that particular time. Cause especially in this generation, because growing up, um, for me, like when I was younger, people wasn't thinking about how you feel, how it's affecting you, exactly. your mental state. Facts. You know, um, this is the reason why such and such and such. And you know, how was it growing up? And you know, you start to look back and be like, oh, that's why I have men problem. I that's totally why agree. I it is. So that's the one thing I love about that this generation is that they make you think about all of that. It's True. like they're trying to break that traditional, that generational curse. It's Trying so it makes me wonder. I wonder what the next generation is going to be like. Yeah. That's the positive side of this generation. It has a lot of negative. Yeah. But that's the positive side of this generation that but, I like. But even with a lot of men, a lot of men still don't understand that mm -hmm. aspect of parenting and growing up. Right. You know, and I didn't. I didn't really develop those skills until I became a teacher because I was mm -hmm. a teacher for a gym teacher for eleven years, and so it's just dealing with eight hundred kids every kids. day it gave me a different perspective on how to deal with kids. And mm -hmm. it, it, I believe, this is my personal opinion, every black man need to be a teacher for at least two to three years because mm -hmm. it would teach you empathy on a whole nother level when it comes to parenting. That's why I'm so, that's why my kids are with me now. That's why I'm so responsible on what I do, what I don't do, what I say, how I carry myself, everything, because I'm planting seeds, everything I do, everything I say, and a lot of men would do anything in front of their children, and if I would have had my kids at a younger age, when I was in the streets, I believe I wouldn't be the father that I am today. I agree uh, and I disagree with certain things because I know some teachers who are great teachers, mm -hmm. but can't handle their own kids. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. They prefer to put their kids on somebody else because they don't have patience with their own kids. It's different to have patience yeah, with other sure. people's kids. For sure. But to deal with your own, mm -hmm. it's totally different. Well, one, one thing, I. I sitting here listening both of y'all talk you know you said generational curses mm -hmm. you said plant seeds you know these are things that we learn from structure of whether it be biblical the Quran or wherever you learning how to be a better person through looking at other people's uh, lifestyles in these books that we've read for if you, sure there's a lot of today and these books have been around forever so these are things that shape our character even if they didn't do it back in the days because they didn't uh, pretty much meditate on the on, on the different things that they were learning and accustomed to. Yes, sir. The, the knowledge was there. We know the knowledge was there. It talks about, and that's how I, I develop my skills after turning my life over to God, to be honest with you. Yes, I have to be real. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to look at your character. I didn't have to go to no mental nothing. I, I, I went to that place where I died and became a person who could understand how to learn structure and look at other people's lives and compare mine to the lives that I read about. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? For sure. This is the things that helped me. So the generational curse, the planting seeds, these things are things that help me to understand how to develop my uh, character in a way to where I could deal with my children, my wife, my mother, my brother, 
because before learning these things, I didn't understand how to deal with yeah. different, you know, mm -hmm. situations that mm -hmm. came my way. I tried to handle them from a, a perspective of whatever was tangible or whatever flesh. I could do to try the to flesh. figure out a way to, to, to capitalize on the moment through a hustle or a scheme or whatever. Yeah. That's what I, and I would use my own <laughs> Your own capacity, yeah, 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 my own yeah, intellect. Yeah. Nigga, what? Oh, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's a, what we yeah. all did. No, for sure. That's facts. So when you that's look, facts, especially and I mean, especially if you didn't have somebody there to filter your there your you thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why you, especially as a teenager? Because like I say, just to go ahead and finish up the story. Like so, around the fifth grade, we moved with my grandmother. So we would see my dad maybe once a year. Cause, cause so my dad took us on, but then after we moved my grandmother, he fell back. Mm. I don't understand that. But that's a whole nother situation. And then, you know, we in Holly Hills with my grandmother and grandfather. And then you already, you know, you from Dallas, right? Oh, yeah. No, I'm so, from East Texas, but I've been in Dallas okay. since the 70s. Okay, so you, are, been here a exactly. long time. so you already know what I'm dealing with growing up in the 80s and 90s yeah. in Holly Hills. You know what I mean? So we just gravitated toward what we knew. Yeah. That's the streets. Do that's you feel street. like it's, because some people say it don't matter, but um, knowing the things that you know now, do you think it might be important to maybe, whether you get an answer or not, to ask your dad, um, why why did you fall back? Or ask your mom, why weren't you there? Whether, whether you got, get an answer you want or not, but at least to get it off your chest. Whether Well, I had a heart to heart. So I grew up always thinking that the divorce was my dad's fault. Mm. Come to find out it was my mom's fault. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My whole life I thought it was my dad. Mm -hmm. Then come to find out it was my mom the reason they got divorced, but that's a whole, I ain't gonna put their business out right, there, right? right. But, you know what I'm saying? It's just that a lot of things I just didn't, I, it's still, I had a conversation with my dad one time and he still avoided accountability. Right. You see what I'm saying? So trying to get him, you know, the older guys, and he probably understand what I'm Tomorrow. saying. And I'm not saying you don't understand, but <laughs> I'm just saying like the old grandfathers, the old men back in the day, when they was in the house, they really didn't say too much. I know that was my experience. Right. Like my grandfather, he wasn't emotional. So what I had to do was I had to look at my grandfather to understand my dad. Exactly, because that's where they get it from. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And I'm totally different from my dad. Mm -hmm. I'm verbal. I'm sociable. My dad is an introvert <laughs> of introverts. He don't talk to people. He really don't deal with people unless it's, a, unless it's mainly about business. But trying to be emotional and open up, he don't deal with his emotions. Matter of fact, my dad has never told me he loved me, mm. ever, mm. right? Even after we, we established our relationship back when I was 21. Mm -hmm. But one day, I said, I'm going I'm to I'm make him say he loved me. So you're going to say it to him? Yeah, I'm going to say it to him. And I said it. He didn't even respond. Mm -hmm. And at this time, you know, I'm older, so I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm like that now. So I'm like, say, bro, I tell you I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I meant that, though. Like, I was on that type of time with him. Because, like, bro, I'm trying to open up with you. Mm -hmm. And then he he went on and said it. But I had to force him to say it. Mm -hmm. And it broke me, bro. Hurt my heart. Just, I'm just being transparent. I don't mind being wrong. So a lot of men don't want to be wrong. Yeah. I don't, it but did it me. make him say it easier for him to say it the next time? Or the next time it didn't even come? I, I've, I've never went back down that road. But let me say this. I remember one time I was 17 years old. And there was a situation that transpired. So... I was in the street by then, like getting it mm -hmm. to the point where I'm paying bills, all that. Mm -hmm. I'm in high school. Right. And so one day he came over to the crib and I, I, I just felt like I wanted to be transparent and have a conversation with him. And the situation happened, boom, he slapped me. What? Yeah, he slapped me, mm. straight up. And so me, like I say, I'm, I'm on that type of time by then, I know I can with my daddy. Mm -hmm. It's not even a question. Mm -hmm. But this is what I told him. I said, say, bro, let me tell you something. The Bible say, honor thy father and thy mother, mother that our days may be long upon the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Your mother groomed me and raised me to honor my father and mother, even though you have not been here step by step. Right. So I'm going to show you how strong I am by honoring the woman that raised me it's, it, when, you, when you were supposed to be raising me, mm -hmm. so I'm going to show you the strength that she put in me mm -hmm. that I'm not even going to retaliate. I still love you, bro. I'm not even going to go that route with you. 
Yeah, stretch no, that, that's, that's honorable, yeah. man. And you you helped him too, whether he want to admit it or not. Mm-hmm. I never hugged my daddy till you hear this story mm-hmm. all the time. Till I graduated high school, really never hugged him. That was the first hug I ever got. Yes, you sir. Know? Um, never told. I, and when I learned who God was for me, I started saying I love you to him. Yes, sir. That, that was something that they didn't express like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I get exactly what you're saying because I came under that same umbrella. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? So I, sure. I understand that, you know, and it is hurtful, but you have to keep telling them, keep telling them, keep saying it. Me and my brother talk about that all the time. Yeah. When you keep telling somebody that, then it, it, it puts them in a different place because they're yeah. used to hearing it from their mother. They're used to hearing it from their daddy. Uh, no, they, not their not, daddy, not, their no, grandma, they, Well, some females. dad, some dad, feet. No, not just female. <laughs> I'm talking back in the people day. People understand who God exactly, is. Exactly, for they're sure. different, you know, different people. I get it, the females are inherent and they love more than me and we get, we know that they're emotional, but at the end of the day. The average man is not saying not that. Saying the average it. man is not because saying Because they it. feel like I got to toughen you up. If I tell you I love you, I'm making you soft. That's what I've always heard. So that's why a lot of men don't do that. And because, yes, their father didn't tell them that, so they didn't know how to. But the reason why I was asking if you've ever just, you know, opened up and said it to him, whether you get a response or not, or even if he doesn't say anything, but get it off your your chest is because in life and even up to today, people can't read your mind. True. They don't know. We try our best what we can do as a parent. We try. And a lot of parents are very guilty of this. We overcompensate with our kids what we didn't have. Facts. So if we didn't have clothes, shoes, all of that, we're giving our kids all of that. But that don't mean that's what your kids need Facts. right now. Totally agree. So by you opening up, and every parent think that they're doing the best that they can, no matter what it is. Even all of you might not as a child. So opening up and telling them, you know, this is how I felt when I was younger because you weren't here, this, 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 this. Whether they're quiet, I guarantee you when they walk off, they're going to think about it. They're going to, or they might open up. You don't know, it depends on the stage they're at in their life. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I feel that that conversation is very important for I agree. healing. I, I totally agree. agree. I'm going to shift gears. Thank you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> you, know, you know, we just took it there. Well, You're I, welcome. You, I know, yeah, you're yeah. welcome. You get 10 minutes. That's all you get. <laughs> you get there, man. But um, uh, I want to get into the training. You know what I mean? Yes, like sir. The, the training is something else because, you, you know, I seen y'all size you up when you come in here, to be honest with you. You know, and, and I say, you know, I seen him in black. You know, they thinking that. I seen black got his little arm stuck out a little bit. You, I ain't even been working out. You know that. I mean, you know, I will beef up and, you know, cut up on a nigga every now and then. Yeah. Can do your little conditioning program. I watched it. I seen it. I say, the nigga got a few little tricks he do. He do the muscle ups. I seen that. I say, okay, <laughs> I see the nigga trying to pull these games, man. But let's get into it, man. <laughs> the training is live and dope, man. Thank you so I'm much for certain. being there for our people, man. I'm on it. I'm on you, it. You, you, you're a dope guy, man, to even be to attain the level that you've attained. I see you in the picture with Thomas. That Thomas and me met at Big T, and nigga ain't act the same with me since. He didn't. I didn't have <laughs> boss talk at the time. No. You know, I told a nigga I knew Michael Irvin. He was saying he knew Dion. We was tit for tat. Yeah. I thought me and the nigga was going to be friends. He followed me on Instagram and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ain't heard from the nigga since, baby. Yeah, he was a, a little homie from the hood. Yeah, no, I like the nigga, though. But yeah. they always hit him up. Tell that's, him. How I, that's, how I I, met, that's how I met Earl. Okay, I oh, love okay. seeing him and his son together. That's what I used to tell him. Mm-hmm. And he would say something online, and, you know, I'm big, big. Big brother almighty. Hey, man, don't even worry about that, man. Your son way more important. I say stuff like that. Yeah. Because people, the devil try to get y'all focused. For sure. You see what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. And, and at the end of the day, he do little things, uh, put little obstacles in your way. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of times I get up at night if I see something don't look right. I don't care. If I t- have talked to you, I'm going to text you and say, hey, man, pull up. But I see you guys in the gym. You play a little basketball, too? Cause I didn't see you. Well, I, I don't play anymore. I used to. Yeah, because them niggas was out there playing basketball, too, him and yelling and all them. They can't play that good. I yeah, see yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. trying. I don't, I don't do a lot of recreational <laughs> s- sports because... You know, if you turn ACL, mm-hmm. anything, you know what I mean? I, you know, I'm, listen, I'm not getting paid no more. You know, I ain't going to say no more, but I'm not going to get Poor paid time. for out here playing basketball. So I, Sports I, I, I get out, up yeah, everything. I just stay in the gym. I'm good. So how was it and how did you end up? Because uh, I know, heard you say you coach for, I mean, you know, trained for a while and you was over kids and whatever. But just explain to us how you got into it seriously, professionally. Oh, you know? well, so... 
I was working at the school gym teacher, and then I was building my, my training business on the side. You know, going to work, then getting off work, training people, things of that nature. And you started young. No, 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 no. I didn't start working. I had never worked out in my life till I was like twenty nine. Wow, really? That's hard. Yeah, you started yeah. late. Yeah, I, I was. A, I was. A, <laughs> in the streets, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't like yeah, saying that because, yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying. But yeah, yeah I was. Yeah, that was I definitely understand. That's that. all I did my whole life. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> no. 29, you decided to change your life and exactly. Go to so, so what happened was, so the reason I changed my life because my sons, my oldest son, mom, me and her were together, and you know she didn't like the lifestyle I was living. Okay. So she inspired me to change my life. Cool. So what I did was I went eventually, <laughs> eventually, because <laughs> it was, it it was hard while. to go get a job. I eventually got a job. My partner mama hooked me up, got me in, the, uh, got me inside the school district, and then I started doing that. So years later, I uh, started working out just because I just wanted to work out, and so uh, I just got good at it overnight. I just it was like a gift from God. I just yeah, like I got a gift from God because my partner. My partner sticks named me Blu-ray because one yeah, day I, heard him. I had started working out and then one day I'm on the block because, you know, I'm still dibbing and dabbing mm -hmm. and I had my shirt off and he was like, he pulled up because like, he hadn't seen me in a minute. He was like, bro, what you been doing? I said, man, I've been working out. And he said, man, your body high definition like a Blu-ray. You know what a Blu-ray <laughs> player is. You know what a Blu-ray high man. definition is. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a hard. true story. Yeah. That's how it happened. And so he said, man, your body high definition like, like a, a Blu-ray Blu -ray player. <laughs> you know, that's the one you had to steal. I mean, it was, was a high quality. You had to pay a little more for that. Yeah, yeah. That's so why I was like, I was like, man, I like that name. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I started calling myself Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Yeah, high definition. That's wow. Dope. So when you, okay, so, okay, you end up, you start training. How do you even end up? You say Thomas introduced you to it, but, but how did you end up being Earl Spence Jr.'s okay, so, trainer? So, so what happened was... I was doing a little tricks on Instagram, like you said yeah. there, right? Because I was a part of a team called Team Beast Mode out of New York. Yeah. So if you pull up Lord Vital on YouTube, like one of the strongest dudes ever, like he a legend wow. in working out. Like he's probably one of the strongest dudes ever to be on YouTube, right? So I was a part of his crew because I used to go to New York and work out. Wow. Yeah, I used to go to New York, New York and work out. Cause I remember the first time I worked out with Team Beast Mode, we did like 2,400 push-ups, like 2,400 push-ups. The first, how, hold on, the how first day. How long did it take y'all just did them? So, how many sets? So, so what? It, so, so what it is is that they have these stairs in uh, what we in Lincoln Terrace Park. I think we were Lincoln Terrace Park. They got these stairs, either Lincoln Terrace or Tompkins, one of those two. They got these stairs, 24 stairs. So what you have to do to be initiated, you got to do 100 push-ups. Every step. Every step. Every step. So when you get done, it's 2,400. Mm. So I'm up there working out this. Uh, so that's continually no breaks. In no breaks. Way. No. That's what I'm trying to you figure can't out. Break. You're no. doing 100 every, every, every step. step. Every step. Every step. Are they a straight? Yeah. Or do you stop? No, you're supposed to do it straight. But so sometimes this, you stop. So this, of course, this is my first time. Yeah, <laughs> y'all ain't <laughs> stopped there. I heard your damn you leg. Cause oh, I'm over there. I heard so it's burning. Hey, like, look these people up. Lord Vital, they call him Beast, and a dude named Juice, Team okay. Beast Mode, right? So, and, and JR from Team Beast Mode. So, this is my first time up there working out. So, when they say we about to, and, and then Young Stacks too, they say we about to uh, do 24, I say, what? I'm from Holland here, I'm from Dallas. We don't work out like that. Like, what are you talking about? So, but you don't back down from a competition. Man, listen, I back down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, listen, the dude named Juice, he hopped down. He bang out a hundred straight. I say, what? He go to the next step. A hundred straight. I say, nah, man. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, this ain't real. I'm boss, I'm looking at him. A hundred. What? How long does it take? I don't remember. Cause I stopped at 400. You're like, what the <laughs> hell? I, don't lie, I stopped at 400. Keep it a buck. I stopped at four. But that dude Juice, Beast and all them, bro, they all of it. up the step, bro. No stopping, but they've been training they've like been this. Doing that they've been conditioned, like doing it for so long. It's like my oldest brother, when he was locked up, he was telling me they were doing a thousand push ups in that. a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, so. 100 it? It wasn't believable until I seen it. Seen it. Did you yeah. ever. Oh, he done, done it. He done done it. Well, I'm going to say, hold on, I get there. I get, I get there. So I didn't, I, I never did, I never did it with the Beast Mode. With team. the Beast Mode. I okay. never did it with them, but. That was my initiation okay. into the crew. You know okay. what I'm saying? So I come back to Dallas. So I'm in Dallas. I'm working out by myself. I ain't got nobody. Ain't nobody down here doing that. You know what I'm saying? This is like, oh, 
eight. Oh, nine? Anybody out here working? You should have called me. I was, I was ready. You was getting it by then? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. You was getting it by then? Said, what? Back like, then. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, now I ain't did nothing lately. She like, ain't lying. You. But it's in me. You know, it's in me. Don't try to play me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, nah, for sure. So, you know, I get on the internet doing my little tricks and stuff like that. Then Charles Hatley, uh, he seen me. You know what I mean? But Charles Hatley uh, was popping back. You know, he a professional boxer. He was popping at the time. So, he hit my DM. No, no, I take it back. He didn't DM. He just sent me a message. And so I hit his DM and boom, we hooked up to them. I trained him two fights. So the first fight I trained him, he had a fight in two weeks. He went 12 rounds. And then the next fight I trained him, I trained him the entire count. Mm. He knocked the dude out in the first round. Ooh. So after that fight, we kind of parted ways for, for whatever reason. And then Thomas, mm -hmm. he found out about it that I wasn't training Charles anymore. So he was like, man, I got this, I got a partner, bro. I promise you, bro, he's gonna be a world champion one day. I'm talking about, bro, he the, he the baddest dude around here. Yeah. And I was like, who? He said, I'm gonna hook you up with him. Boom, he he, he set the meeting up. You know, he's talking about Earl Spence. Mm -hmm. He set the meeting up. So he set the meeting up, and you know, and that's how I met Earl Spence, and we started training. We started, we fight, we first, our first training session was at the 24 hour fitness in Cedar Hill. Wow. The first time we had worked out. And, but and then after that, we, we, we locked in. All the way in. Yeah, we locked in. So, and, and, and word, had, word on the streets. Is that it, for ten fights when you was training, he had ten knockouts. Is well, nah, that true? No, it's eleven. Eleven. I'm sorry. Excuse yeah, 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 me. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean no yeah, problem yeah, by yeah. that. It, 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 it ain't word on yeah, the street. That's word that's, on that's, the street. That's, that's that's facts. That eleven. What, do you know the names of all eleven fights? So if you if you go on box rec, right? If you go on box rec and you pull up Earl Spence. So if you go on and so if you pull up Earl Spence box rec and you look at his box rec, you'll see uh, he fought a dude named Ronald Cruz. And so after the Ronald Cruz fight, from that, that's when I started training him. And then I trained him all the way up to the Ocampo fight. So wow. that's 11 fights. He so had 11 stoppages. How did you feel? When you Did you know that what you was doing was working? Like you knew that it was something that was uh, shaping and molding him and helping with these wins, you know, as far as... Because conditioning is serious. Like mm -hmm. you have to have your, you know, your your A game on the mentally yeah. to even deal with the type of training. Just like you said, you went into it talking mentally, just about seeing them guys in New York doing them twenty four hundred push ups. Yeah. It's the same thing, even when you're dealing with coming into with, with training Earl or training any box. Yeah. Like so, what was it like? Like what? How was it mentally even preparing him and getting to know him and understanding what he was looking for? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't know to, in, the, in, the, in the beginning. You know, I knew I was a great trainer and I knew I was good at what I, what I was doing. But, you know, this was my first big time boxer. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you only had one more before him. Exactly. You know what I mean? So going from training basketball players and football players and dealing with them, when you How talk about is that? fighting, it's, it's totally different. It's totally different, right? Okay. But I... Over the years, I mastered it. I, right. I got it figured out now. You know what I'm saying? But it took time. So, with, with working with Earl, when I first started training him, I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to get him in shape, but I didn't know how to make him a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, at first, when I was training him, I just had him in shape. And he going off his natural talent yeah. natural ability and a lot of trainers won't be transparent to be real in that regard you know but some people get up here man I know what I'm no 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 because you gotta understand what his body responds to and I know what his body responds to because the results speak for themselves right so but what were you in charge of because when I think about a box I think about they have multiple um, trainers or coach yeah, yeah, yeah. so when you say make him a monster I think about somebody who's making him a monster is a person who's actually teaching him the techniques the boxing no, no, no. and all of that no 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 no. that is a part of it that's an element that's of, a part right. of it don't, so don't, don't get it twisted what form of a monster are you talking about making okay, him like endurance wise yeah in fact so, so my, my my philosophy was to train his body where he was a machine that was my, when I say make him a monster, into physically making him a machine. Mm -hmm. I don't do the boxing technique. That's not my lane. Mm -hmm. You know, Derrick James, you know, he's trained out a year last year. He's great. Been with Earl before I even met him. Uh, he's phenomenal at what he do. He got a lot of great top boxers at the moment. You know what I mean? So that, you know, Derrick James was in charge, and he always been there working on the technique and the game plan, et cetera, et cetera. 
But when I came in, my, my my goal was to make his body unbreakable. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That when he get punched, he don't feel it. Okay. And when he punched somebody else, that he break him. Okay, mm -hmm. here, here, here's, a, and, and the elephant is in the room, so I definitely got to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. uh, like, coming out the other night, when me and my wife, we was over at my partner's house watching this fight. And when we was over there, when he comes out, I'm looking at his face, and I'm looking at just his posture. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm trying to figure this, what I'm seeing out. Yeah. And then when the, when he get in the ring, I'm looking at him, but I'm still saying he don't look like the Earl Spence to me. Yeah. And this was before. And that's crazy because he and I wasn't sitting together. We were sitting, I'm sitting with the girls, he's sitting, with, sitting the guys, with the guys. Mm -hmm. And we both felt the same, same exact thing. way. Cause mm -hmm. when we Why saw him, is that? We're like, you know what I mean? Before like, he yeah. even started fighting, I'm yeah. like, that don't look like the same Earl Spence like we normally now, see Now, let me stop, because we rookies, okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm a damn rookie, okay? Just no, 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 listen. Now, I'm not into it like you. Now, hold on, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you something real quick. Let me show you something. This is, this is, this is, it, this ain't no improv, right? Hold on. Now, what day did he fight on? He fought on Saturday, Saturday. 29th. 29th, right? Now, hold on. I want you to see something real quick. What's that date say? Hold on. What that date say? Let's say the 20th. The 20th. What the? This is a woman. This is not a man. This is a woman. What's she say? Earl need... Let me see. Hold on. What's she say? Great. She say... This is a woman. Earl... Earl... From, from what I see, Earl needs you for his strength because... He is not as ripped up as he used to be when you trained him. Okay, bye. <laughs> and that's on the twentieth. That's on the twentieth. Oh, that's on the twentieth. And so that's somebody around. I received. Now she's a trainer because I trained her. Yeah. Okay. So she knows she's talking about. Because so she's a trainer. You, yeah. I, you she, trained her. I trained her. And I got so many calls about before what, the fight. Oh, wait before I can I can show you way more receipts on people that was like, yo, we don't. Like, he ain't looking the same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So, me, I seen a lot of things before the fight that I didn't like. You, okay. do, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But I never spoke on it publicly because if I say something, Blue Ray will hate him. You hate he, him. Because he not training with you. How anymore. long ago did you stop training him? Well, I trained him for the Pacquiao fight. Okay. So that was that wasn't that wasn't far. Yeah, that was like two fights two before fights this before. one. So like remember his eye had messed up. His eye had messed up. So yeah. six months ago you stopped training. No, 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 no. no, 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 no that was no, like maybe about two years. Maybe about two years. Two years. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. So like I say, so I trained him eleven fights, then I went three without him, then he brought me back for Pacquiao, and then he went two without me. Okay. So why did he no, stop? I have no no no, listen, I don't mind talking about okay. it. Okay. I have no idea. Everybody, I've been, since the day, the fight, the first fight, the Mikey Garcia fight, he didn't use me. I have been getting DMs, <laughs> emails since, for, since 2018, 19, whenever we fought Mikey Garcia, people asking, wondering why, what. Matter of fact, I did a video on YouTube. Nothing ever happened. I was just over his house for the, for the Super Bowl. We, we kicked it, watched the Super Bowl together. All that. Like, okay, but. Ain't nothing ever, listen, ain't nothing ever happened. It was, I guess it was just a business decision on his end. Like, he okay. just chose not to train with me okay, for whatever but, reason. But, but when you seen him come out, that's the question I had mm -hmm. for you that night. What did you think? I mean, I let's just, be real. No, no, I don't, I don't mind. When I seen him, I just felt like he wasn't conditioned. That's what I felt like. Before he even took one punch. No, for sure. Because I, I seen it in the, in the, in the uh, what's that? The, uh, the uh, media workout. I just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I feel like his body one condition. And it's just my personal opinion. I mean, and, I, and I'm not a professional like you. I ain't watch it in detail, but mm -hmm. when he got hit, even in the first round, it seemed like, or when he hit, mm -hmm. it didn't seem like it was the same, you know, the, the effectiveness was not there. Yeah. Am I tripping or did you see the same thing? No, of course. Eric, the world seen it. No, I, I'm just saying because I'm I don't I'll try not to be no professional, but I watch yeah. a little bit. But but I'm not but, like you though. Well, but, but certain things are obvious. That's yeah, what it was they obvious. Say. So he when he hit, it didn't seem like it had no effect, and when he got hit, it seemed like it was very effective. Okay, yeah. first of all, I I said the way in which he was boxing to me. It be looking like you know when somebody have a hangover oh, shit. or a drunk, because to me, because first time he got hit, I personally until they did the, the replay, I thought he tripped over his foot. Mm. That's how it looked to me. Yeah. Until I saw the replay and I was like, oh, he did get hit. 
Mm -hmm. But that's how it looked to me. It looked like he was not, you know, the stands wasn't good. The structure, just, just, it just didn't look right to me. So that's why I felt like, okay, did he go partying the night before? Did he have a hangover? Well, you know, what's um, name? All of Mike, that. Mike Tyson got, gave him some little pack. I, I don't know what Mike was trying to do. Maybe Mike was trying to help Bud, but he gave him, when he went to that a podcast, a little, little value pack. And, you know, he over there getting high every day. So I don't know. But it, well, I don't. Well, me. Well, I don't. Well, like I say, I I I haven't been in the camp in a while. So you don't know certain things. I hadn't been around them in a while. You know what I mean? Because when I was trying to him, we was together all the time. All day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a lot of things that I, I have. You just won't even I, be able I, to talk. I, I, I can't to. talk about it because I'm I'm not around like that. You but, know what I'm saying? But when you seen that, being that you tied to him, and I heard like everybody I else. Can I heard, bro, bro, my little boy right here, bro. Let me tell you something. My little boy, I didn't even know he watched it. My little boy got YouTube on his phone. My little boy came to me and said, bro, this my, he right here, bro. He came to me, because I had used at his mama house when the fight came out. So, you know, I went and watched the fight. And so, in my head, I was like, man, I'm glad my little boy didn't see that. And bro, I put my right hand to God, bro. He came to me, he said, daddy, why Uncle, cause he called him Uncle EJ. Yeah. He said, why Uncle EJ didn't train with you? He was like, cause daddy, he don't look the same. This an eight year old saying this. And he was like, Daddy, I can't ever watch that again. Bro, that broke my heart, bro. And it's it's crazy because if y'all were so successful together, you would have thought that he would have, you know, uh, rocked out with you even, because he could have had two, couldn't he? he yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, of course. You don't just have yeah, one. Yeah, no, no, he could have worked with me and another strength and conditioning coach. I, I, I don't have an issue with that. As long as, in my opinion, as long as they're doing the things that are necessary to benefit his body and to, to make sure that he's at optimum shape, yeah, for sure. Whoa. Because everybody don't know what they're doing. Just because you got a big name don't mean you know what you're doing. That's Correct. A, not Correct. A fact. Do you think that, like, you've done a lot of training, man, and your training is very extensive. Um, do you think it just was something that he just, was Was it unbearable at this time? Did you keep going? Did you pressure him so much to where he's like, man, let me get with somebody else who might know how to do it in a way to where it's not too much pressure? Because you might be over there putting that real pressure down. Well, you growing every time, <laughs> nigga. Like you excel. Like this time we're gonna do thirty five. You this time we're no, gonna no, do so, twenty five. So, like, so me, and, so what? So what happened was like when I first started trying to Earl, we kind of go back to what we was talking about earlier. I started studying Bruce Lee. Okay. So I train. I studied. I studied. I studied Bruce Lee, and uh, my mentor Beast, right? Beast, and then another guy from a, a crew called the Barbarian. His name Devin Sosa. They call him Zeph Zachavelli. Like these two of the strongest dudes in the world. This this is documented, right? Mm -hmm. They they like my brothers. So I started, you know, hitting them up like, bro, like how to make somebody like super strong. Woo woo woo. And then I was studying Bruce Lee. So they gave me some advice. And what I studied from Bruce Lee, and what I did, well, I took all the information that they gave me, whipped it up, and mm -hmm. boom, and started training Earl a certain type of way. So me and Earl, what we would do was, I, I go to workout, we would do 700 push-ups uh, for our warm-up. Before he work out, we would do 700 push and I worked out with Earl. So when I trained him, I worked out with him. So I, I wasn't sitting there standing on the sideline looking, no. I worked out with him to push him. You know what I'm saying? Because to work out with me, you got to be in shape, shape. 700 push-ups. Yeah. And, and and then that was just to get, get, no, that's get the warm warmed up. up. That's the warm-up. Then we started working out. Man, like. And we like, did that like three days a week. When you seen it, because mm -hmm. you, you watch boxing. I'm going back to the fight because that's the big elephant for me in the room. Like mm -hmm. When you seen the skill set of, of Terrence Crawford, was it something that you didn't expect? Or did you expect him to play the role he played? For the way nah, the boxing listen, you know, how much, you know how many people I had to sell? <laughs> I oh. lost money. But I'm saying, you knew the nigga's skill set, you don't want yeah, to fight. But, but, but I feel like Earl was a better fighter, a better skill set and everything. And my, why I put money on Earl? I thought he mm -hmm. had the better skill set, in my opinion. That's even why I bet it on him. Even though you knew you weren't training him and you wasn't sure I still bet it on him. They're my brother. I love him to death. Let me tell you I'm something. not finna put no money on nobody but Earl Spence. Let me tell you mm -hmm. something. I, you remind me of uh, the, the Rocky when, when when Rocky didn't go with Creed, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he mm -hmm. was at the house, you know, when he... he <laughs> no, he was, at, he was he at his, at the, his, his bar, restaurant yeah. watching the yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you didn't go to the fight did you nah uh -uh. see what i'm saying did you have to turn the tv off after a while i couldn't watch it 
See what I'm Just saying? Like Same he did. thing. Bro, I almost cried, bro. I'm like, like a lot of people probably camping, bro. Oh my, bro, I almost cried, bro. It hurt. It hurt a lot. Like, of it people. hurt watching it, bro. I'm not gonna lie. It I, did. Did. I will never watch that fight again, ever in my life, bro. It I don't want to see it. I've been off the internet for days, bro. I only like going on Instagram. None all of that, the bro. memes that put up against I don't want to see none of that. Stuff. I really like mad, bro. Did you think that's just like you know? And I ain't, and I ain't I ain't trying. I you know I salute the men. I'm not I'm not the FOI, but like I seen Farrakhan talk about it. But the thing about it is when I when I seen the clip when Farrakhan was talking about it, the people in the audience was laughing. I didn't I didn't find that funny. But what you did know Farrakhan what I say? Wait yeah. a minute. What did Farrakhan? No, do? Farrakhan just said it was it was hard to watch the fight. You know what I'm saying? And then he said Earl Spence needs a friend. And when he said that, everybody started laughing. And I like, ain't nothing funny about he that. He didn't mean, I don't know. No, 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 it's not the, no, that's not, I'm not saying right. he meant to the, no, 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 that's no. not what I'm no, saying. No, I know that, but I'm saying I'm not for saying them he, to be, I'm talking for them to be laughing, I think they took it in the wrong way of how he really meant it. No, for sure, but at the, it, even, but even in that regard, I feel like it wasn't funny on no level. Right. Wait, even man. if you didn't, even if you did mean it in a laughable way, that wasn't funny. But what right. about all the memes, you know, there's so many. That's why you scout the internet. I, I mean, it's they everywhere. It. The Michael Jordan meme was, was one when he cried that time and it was on everything. They put, they, they got the Martin meme with Earl Spence face beside it. They playing games on that internet, man. It's yeah, not, I seen it. They, I can't. They, but that's social media, the way how it is today. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking to him like he said it affected him like like nah, because, real and I know it affects people because they love and Earl. Like, and that's like Rainwater said, Dallas turning their back on Earl. That ain't true. Rainwater came over here. But, he but that's said not Dallas true. That's not true, bro. Back. He said that, everybody. No, that's not. That's what they do. Hold on, hold on. Listen, people are laughing. That's a fact. Because Rainwater said people are laughing on the internet. That is a fact. But bro, I was just on the phone with with with, with my brother yesterday. Not Earl, but somebody that be with him every day. And in the background, Earl was in the background, everybody asking to take pictures with him. Saying, what's up, champ? I heard him on the phone. You see what I'm saying? And then all the people that rock with him in real life, bro, he, listen, bro, Earl ain't trained with me, and people think it's an issue. I ain't no issue with me. That's my brother. It's like me and my blood brother have a situation where we don't we go at time where we don't talk to each mm -hmm. other. But he's still my brother. He, like I said, we watch the Super Bowl together. If he called me, we stay 10 minutes from each other. I'm going to pull up. It ain't no question. So the, the real ain't turned their back on him. The you know what I'm saying? Really but, even, but even whenever, but even whenever um, he said that, I don't know if you watched the whole thing, but I even said no, to I him. I didn't watch the whole thing. But I, I even said to him after he said that, I said, not everybody, because yes, you, you have you have a lot of people who still, I saw personally on Instagram, on Facebook, stuff mm -hmm. like that, who say, you know, everybody had their ups and downs, but we rocking with you regardless. Facts. Just like, and he related him to the Cowboys. And I'm like, shoot, Cowboys is America's team, and as much as they keep losing, losing yeah. you know what I mean? Everybody still love them. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry right. Jones was at that boxing match. Right? No, I know. I know. He was there. Yeah, he was there. Listen, let my me, partner was sitting behind him. I know. Yeah, let, let, let me. And you know, and he rocked with Earl. You know, that's why he was there. Yeah. Um, I just, man. Okay, December coming up. Mm -hmm. Is do, in your in your mind is that too soon or is that? Or is that the right time and for them to do this next fight? Earl said he wouldn't want to do it in December. Earl a dog, bro. Earl like that, bro. Like straight up, he like that. Now, if you want my personal opinion? Yeah. My personal opinion, I feel like my bro should go beat up Keith Thurman. This is my this is my personal opinion. I feel like hey, that's practice. Hit Crawford up, say fam, we still locked in. Boom, just give me. Let me go get Keith Thurman real quick because he on the internet doing all this woofing because I lost. But when I was when I was training Earl, Keith Thurman didn't want no parts of him. Keith Thurman didn't even know his name. You can go on YouTube. Keith Thurman had a million and one excuses. Mm -hmm. So bad, I lost this fight. Say, bro, let us stay locked in for that fight. Just let me go beat up on Keith Thurman real quick and let's run it back. That's that's how I want. That's what I want Earl to do. But I'm not Earl. Earl a dog. I believe Earl gonna go straight into it. I don't want him to, but that ain't I can't I ain't got no control over that. Okay, because you know it's a contract. It's a contract in place. It's a contract in place. No, I get it. Um, two things. Cause we skipped over this. Um, I'm not sure if you asked this question, but when Earl lost all his weight and to fight this fight, mm -hmm. um, do you think that that impacted the way in which he fought because he lost it so quick? I, I believe that the weight cut did have an issue with the, with, you know, because 
you know, from my understanding, some things didn't go right in camp and stuff like that. So we're not making no excuses. But it's a fact that some things transpired in camp and that he had to lose the weight a certain way because something happened. You know what I'm saying? So I do believe that affected him. But like Earl said, I'm from the old law. I'm not making no excuses. And even if I had one, I'm not going to tell you what it was. Right. Uh, and I see that with him, too. And then the next question, do you feel like, because I hear people keep saying the wreck still impact him. I hear people saying that, too. Do you feel, you knew him after the wreck. And you were before training, the wreck. And before the wreck. And you were training with him even then. Do you feel like um, that wreck still affects him today? Not just mentally. I'm talking physically. So, I'm going to say this. I trained him for the Pacquiao fight. That was after, yeah, after the wreck, wreck right? Because right. Earl Danny called me to train him for Danny Garcia. But for some reason, it never worked out. But when he got the Danny fight, okay, boom. We rocked it. We locked in. And from what I seen in the, uh, the, when Garcia. I trained him for uh, Pacquiao, mm -hmm. there was nothing wrong with him. Square he, business. He looked just like he from was. A, from a physical standpoint, he was... From a physical standpoint, he was ready. Like, Just like he was I, before. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe, this is my personal opinion. What was that? I feel like that, I feel I feel like that uh, it was uh, God stepped in. Yeah. I believe it was God saving Manny Pacquiao from Earl. That's what I honestly believe. Really? Nah, that's what I believe. Earl was going to kill that boy. No cap. So he didn't want, God didn't want that to be seen. Didn't want his legacy. I'm listening. Listen, so you believe that Pacquiao was he, that that Earl was gonna kill Pacquiao when he come down to, to totally uh, 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 destroy you, him. destroy. I mean, oh, you know, basically control the fight, maybe even knock him out. This, nah, he was gonna stop him for sure, knock him out for sure. Because see, the man in Pacquiao fight that was the first fight I ever trained him with weights. You know, training with weights with any other fight? No. No, Everything no, no. is body weight. Body weight. We did all body weight training. So why did you feel he like was it was that important? monstrous with body weight training? Why did you feel like it was important to do weights with this fight? Well, I always wanted to train him with weights. He just wouldn't let me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of boxers think in their mind that if you use weights, that it's going to slow them down. But mm. it depends. A lot of trainers don't know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? But I know what I'm doing. So that fight, he allowed me to use weight. Now, we didn't use heavyweights. Now, don't get it twisted. But we use, we did use, you know, some resistor training with weights for that particular fight. And I just believe, and I, and I ain't gonna lie, as a trainer, I was like, yeah. this because I finally got the, because he was going to have a power that y'all never seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. all that was... Before that, as dominant he was, that was with Cal Status. Now I get to really, really, he let the, like, Earl was like, trust me a little bit more and let the rings off. You know what I'm saying? So I finally got to use weights. That was my first fight. I was like, man, I can't wait to see how Earl going to be. But, you know, his eye had messed up. So. And when you think about weights, though, because you're a trainer, people who do, who do anything with weights take the chance of getting injured as well. Yeah, compared to free, if you don't know what you're doing, right? Compared to just doing body weight, you don't really get injured doing body nah, weight. No, facts. Totally so that's agree. another thing, and that's his career. No, nah, I totally agree. But you know, like I say, we built a relationship for so mm -hmm. long, and you know, I'm like, man, Earl, let me do this, and he finally said, I right, bet. But you know what I'm saying? But like I say, it's, I had the situation; it was unfortunate. But you know, do you think that after that, you had, you didn't train him after the I thing? Or did you train no, him? No, no, no. I didn't train him for Ugas. After that, he went with somebody else. And he went with somebody surgery, else. You didn't train him. Yeah, he went with somebody else for this fight, too. So Okay, so what did you see when it come down to the way he moved around in the ring as um, far as after his eye training? Did you, because, like I said, you've seen him from a perspective of you knew how he fought. You watched how he moved. Uh -huh. You watched how his conditioning was. Make me understand how you felt about it because you was watching if that red new if everything had healed properly. Well, he looked good. Like the Ugas fight, he looked good. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't think he was as strong as he was when I worked with him. But you know, uh, but you know, uh, he looked good to me. Like I didn't see any, anything wrong neurologically. Like what these this doctor on the internet saying and people are trying to say. And then I'm not a doctor, so I'm not even finna diagnose it. And I believe that Earl would have, you know, his dad loves him, his mom loves him. I think that. He, it would it would be smart for him. He has the means to be able to go get the top people to analyze right. him to make sure that everything is right neurologically. And then you know there are certain tests that you have to pass 
going into a to a fight. To so a fight. I, I would pray that, you know, that everything was done right. Nobody was paid off and if something was wrong that they would allow him to continue to fight. But I don't I, I think Earl was smart enough to use his resources to be able to make sure that he's hundred percent. Because whether there's no way because oh, this ahead. is his life. You know what I'm saying? He gotta take care of his kids. You gotta have life after boxing and we've seen people in the past like Muhammad Ali, Gerald McCullough, you know, people that I really like, you know, and we've seen the, the aftermath of not taking care of your body, you know, or, or not just having the right people around you to assess these things. When that car started flipping, I seen that car. Mm -hmm. I, he even said that his tooth, he had to get it some tooth because he says he thought his teeth had came out yeah. when he was put at the partial end. Uh, in the fight, you know, in the other fight where he almost where he stumbled, yeah, because he and he smiled. Mm -hmm. and he thought, he said, man, I thought my teeth had came out. Yeah, to impact you, to where your car flip, you fall out, your front's gone, your face cut. Yeah, this is not a normal wreck. We know that. I agree. To throw out of a car moving and flipping like that car was flipping, like, but to see him come back and then win that fight was big for me. For you know sure. what I mean? Yeah, he looked good. Him, he yeah, looked good he against Danny, man. You know, but to see him the other night and to see him the way he was maneuvering around the ring after the fight took off and he got hit with a few blows from uh, uh, Terrence yeah. made me think about neurolo the, the damage, neurological, yeah, yeah, the neurological yeah. damage. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't know. But I heard Crawford say after the match, I hit him. I was hitting him in his ear to throw off his equilibrium. Yeah. You heard him say that, or you didn't? No, hear I didn't hear him say that. Okay, I, I, I heard. I, I, I said, I, bro, I was done with that fight. When yeah. I say I was well, done, yeah. I didn't want. Well, I didn't watch the post I, nothing. I, yeah, I heard him say that. Going into this fight, do you think this next fight do you even have a chance to win this fight? I believe he has a chance for sure. I believe he has a chance if if he. Will you put some money on it? No, I'm not putting no money on it. Oh, that boy got hurt last time. There it is. If yeah, I don't, he ain't gonna put no, no money on it. No, listen. If I don't work with him. I'm not putting no money. You on. put money on him before? I did because I got faith in him. But now you feel like it's a little no, bit more strange. No, no, right. I still got faith in Earl, but I just believe that, like I said, I seen some of the all access, I seen some of the preparation, and me personally, I didn't like the preparation, but I had already made my bets before I seen the preparation, so I was already before locked in. you got in. all those texts. Exactly, I was already locked in on the on the fight. When the fight was made, I made my best. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When you were talking about um, the way in which Earl was fighting and stuff like that, or the different stipulations that the, the boxing federation have where you can't just go into a fight any and anyhow, um, is there where an option where if the boxer signs a waiver, like he takes all responsibility, like nothing falls on them, would they allow something like that? Uh, I, nah, that's not even like like I, I don't like, know. That's not even a thing in boxing. Option. Okay, I didn't like, know. Yeah, that's not even a thing in boxing. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. just curious. Like, say everything is done by the people that put it together. You know, what I mean, they got all the doctors and how they handle their situation. Which I'm not privy to that information, mm -hmm. but there is a process and a protocol on even getting a fight sanctioned. You know what I mean? Like, to even get a fight approved. Like, they're not going to take somebody that's 39 and 0 and let them fight somebody that's 0 and 1. It's, right, 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 right. They won't even approve that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be on certain, certain levels level. to even get a fight approved, period. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you, you, like I said, you, you went on the internet to clear the air the other day. Me, I don't know why people think me and Earl got something. Mm hmm. You don't, it, it, it ain't nothing, we ain't had no issues whatsoever, and, and I get it, but for no excuses, no reasoning, just I'm not working with you no more, basically, and now you standing on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. you guys be around each other, you don't ever have, you never asked him? I've, I've never asked him, you know, of course, it be in my mind, like I, I would be lying if if I. If, you see what I'm and, saying? And I'm not being real if I don't wonder why. I've always wondered why because I feel like, you know, we 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 had like I was. I feel like I was sugar. To, I was the sugar to the Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But outside of that, then we had a personal relationship. So you know, was I, it his the total decision or is it like I have, the organization? I have, you I mean, know what I mean? I have. It no, might not just be listen, his decision. People been asking me this for years, and I always say. Y'all got to go talk to EJ. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to talk to Earl. I'm not the one because if he want me to train him, you know what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. pulling up. Because what I look at is that a fight 
this huge and a fight that was going to be this, you know, um, career defining. Right. Mm -hmm. That you have shown so much success with him over all of the different um, people you've dealt with. Right. Facts. Like, why wouldn't he pull for you more than anybody else? That's the part that is baffling to is, me. Listen, I don't, listen, to this day, I'm trying to tell you, I have no idea. You don't know like what, you done, what you done wrong. You don't know what you done well, wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong. How well, you, well, how something you, you done listen, wrong. How you gonna do Earl something? ain't did nothing. You listen, done something listen, wrong. Listen, how, how you gonna do something wrong when y'all undefeated together? Right. And y'all never the, lost together. The world sees how strong and how powerful he was when me and him worked together. Make it make sense. You and him undefeated together. You've never, he's never lost a fight, of course, dealing with you. Go look at the fights. Damn. I'm upset, you know, because I, I would have loved to see your conditioning and him in the ring with Bud Cross. And then you got to think about it. Like I said, bro, when all the fights that I tried him, we didn't use weights. You know what I mean? And I... I never had a hundred percent of control of what we done while we was training. So I was handicapped while I was training him and we still got those results. No try I don't believe another trainer in this world could have certain exercises that you're allowed to do and can't do, and you still gonna get those results training somebody. Wow. Man, I, you 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 blowing my mind with the with with things that, that you're saying because Something had, you know, something had to be a, a happen for it. Maybe not on your part, but the team. Somebody said something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I want to ask you mm -hmm. more questions, but I, I got a question. Uh, hold if on, you can't just get back in here and ask a question. You listen, wait. Listen, I'm gonna tell you saying? something. Anybody, anybody that know, listen, anybody that know Traylon Curry, they'll tell you I'm a real, I'm solid man. I'm from the street. I'm not from no fitness. And where I come from, anybody put my name on say they gonna tell you, nah, he a hunter, he's solid. So you know already it wasn't that you were straight up and down on your side on listen, every point. Listen, man, listen, listen. Earl, 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 no. I, anytime he needed me, I pull up. And he needs you now, you pulling and, up. And, 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 yeah, of course I'm pulling up. It's not even a question. We, we done went out hunting together. Come on, man, I'm a soldier, bro. No, I, like, okay. real talk. All right, and, and, I, and I get it, man. But, you know, Derek James, his coach, uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, he was saying that he had to fly out to London the next day. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying that he... You know he's he he spread himself too thin. You know now that this loss has happened, you know how the naysayers yeah, 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 say for sure. yeah. he got too many other things that he focusing on outside of Earl Spence uh, Jr. What do you say to that? I mean, do you feel the same way, or do you feel like his total focus is as it's always been? I don't have a I don't have a comment about that. No comment. I can people y'all he won't he won't you know I love this part you know no comment no comment oh man so when have, you go ahead have there been other people who reached out to you to train them oh yeah for sure but oh yeah yeah for sure I've trained other like you know other fighters you know what I'm saying I know I'm talking to that level that no 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 like, no well no no not not on Earl level no 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 oh, okay. is it something that you wouldn't take because of the relationship with you and Earl that you wouldn't even take it. For sure. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, certain, you got, you yeah there's certain people I won't train because of Earl, for sure. Because okay. you and Earl have such a unique uh, relationship mm -hmm. and you can't be over here looking like, like you Even if me and Earl never train again another day, it's just certain people I wouldn't deal we with do it. because I'm loyal to a fault. No, and I, I agree with that. I'm built like that. I agree with that so much. You know much. what I'm saying? Man, I... You no, know, it would, you know, it, you know... It, I enjoy it, man. Like I said, I just know that you know, there's 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 things that you as a uh, you know fitness trainer when run, leading up to a fight, the 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 uh, you know the trainer that basically is in there with him, um, the team around him, mental states, all that stuff yeah. has to do with this fight, yeah. building up the momentum to say we going in here to do this or that. Uh, big extra plug comes out. Mm -hmm. Uh, the music is off just a little bit, as I keep saying. Yeah. Uh, to me, Earl didn't look the the, the way he normally looked for me. Yeah. Um, when I hear the song "Lose Yourself" with Eminem, and I look over there at Bud Crawford, he looks like he's focused like hell. To be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, he did. He got a damn fish net on his own, and he's saying, you know, it's go time. And before he got in that ring, he prayed. I sat and watched this man pray. Take his time. Pray. I seen him. Listen, bro. I'm gonna be honest. You watched the fight. You I seen, seen that part. I seen. I seen him when I seen Bud say Jesus Christ openly, bro. I, I I'm gonna keep it a hundred. 
I had a new respect for him. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, hands down. You see you know what, what I'm saying? saying? And I seen him give props to Jesus Christ like that openly in front of the world. I was I was like, I, we res know. I respect that. Mm -hmm. We know people ain't gonna do that, man. I respect that. Now, I'm keeping it 100. I respect that for sure. See, but I believe that everything happens for a reason. And that's the same thing I said in my last interview. And you know, yes, everybody's upset of him having a loss and what he has to go through. But we all have to go through things so we can get better. Yeah, for so sure. So we can be who God intended us to be. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? I totally agree. So, Do you have a game plan? If Earl Spence was to call you, Earl Spence Jr. call you right now and say, we got to go to work. I got to be ready by December. Could you put a game plan together to make him the most, uh, the, the, the most ready-to-go fighter that you have ever seen within the within – under a six months or five month period. You see what I'm saying? You gonna disrespect me like that? I'm just <laughs> asking you, man. The people need to know. We need to hear it come out of your mouth. Listen, men lie, women lie. Numbers, Numbers don't. don't lie. Of course I can get them in this. Listen, I'm, listen, that's what I do. It's who I am. I, listen, I work out like I'm to the boxer nigga Being the an day. NFL combine or something. And I'm 42 years old. This what what I, time would be too short, though? This what I do. Because you make it seem like you can, oh, that's 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 a lot of Listen, time. Listen, only thing we're going to do is go back to what we was doing the first time and get his body conditioned and acclimated to that type of conditioning. That's all we got to do. But it takes time, though. It don't take no time. When you're consistent. I want to ask you another question. This time they fought at 147. Mm -hmm. Next time they fight at 54. 154. Yes, sir. What is for from your perspective? What is the big, you know, what 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 is different that you have to look at at a one forty seven, uh, um, Earl Spence Jr. versus a one fifty four Earl? Spence In what regard? Though, as, as far as, as, as the, as the, the way he, the training, the, the way the way he's going to be far as boxing wise, boxing wise, you know, going into the situation as. F and, and so, In if, your opinion, it's so, just opinion. So yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So if I was training him, uh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change the recipe. It would be the same thing. Same thing. It would. Be, it would. It would be the same thing because, like, like my mentors when they trained me, like my mentor Beast, he was six two, two twenty. He doing like fifty pull ups in a row. Fifty. 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 So, he trained me mentally that if you train somebody big or small you need to have make sure that person is acclimated to be able to handle their body weight it don't matter what weight they are you condition the body it's like if somebody running a marathon you can condition your body to do whatever you want it to do you know it's like you boss you say when you was whatever I don't know you say if you was down yeah. but you say you was doing a thousand push ups yeah. you didn't go in doing that no 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 no. you condition your body and I'm pretty yeah. sure you seen big dudes yeah. doing the same, same thing. thing so it's just a matter of conditioning yeah. 1500 sit ups every day exactly so it's a, it's a same matter thing. it's a matter of conditioning where you're 147 154 160 168 you gotta condition the body that's all it is wow um, man like I said you, you, you dope man I can't wait to see, uh, you know, what you doing with the next fighter. I know you ain't stopping. We got a, you got some young fighters coming up, and I'm hearing about them. Yeah, I ain't seen them. Jarvis threw some names at me. You okay. know, some okay. people that. Uh, shout out to my guy Marvelous Jarvis, the yeah, hardest Jarvis, nigga man. on the internet. The <laughs> nigga have a show to go. Go watch Marvelous Jarvis. Yeah, but anyway, man. Jarvis, the <laughs> boy, man. he cool people. <laughs> so, like, like, who uh, do you feel like it's some more talent here in Dallas? Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, you got Alex Holly. He under Earl. He over there with Earl. Okay. Now, you know is, it, is he next up? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He he coming up. Alex Holly. I'm gonna look. Alex Holly. Yeah. His name Lex underscore one hundred on, on on Instagram. Yeah. And then you got uh uh I'm Tyson McGriff. Okay. He like 15 years old. He uh over there at the Dunkerville uh. Dunkerville uh, Boxing Academy. He got some at the uh, Dunkerville Fieldhouse. Yeah, now nah, he now nah, he gonna be he gonna be nasty. Yeah, for sure, he gonna be nasty. Yeah. Are you working with any of these guys? Yeah, I'm working with both of them. Well, that's hard. Yeah, I work, hard. I'm working with both of them. Yeah, they gonna be they gonna be nasty, man, for sure. That's hard. And then hard. I got a little kid out of Louisiana. They call we call him Little EJ. Like he an Earl Spence <laughs> fanatic. Really? He a monster, bro. 
I'm like, dog. Love it. Oh, he going to be nasty. Yeah, so. Man, I love that, man, because that's what I always say when you have this type of talent go through the city like that. We should see some uh, uh, some fruits of the labor. You you should see some things popping up around the yeah. situation, and mm -hmm. that's what you're expressing, and I think that's hard. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just got to stay. The thing about it, man, they just got to stay disciplined, bro. That's the main thing, you know what I mean? Because, you know, when you get notoriety and you get money, you know what I'm saying? That's the you know, humble. It's, 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 it's up to them if they continue the path and, and to be great. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, you start giving young kids money, man. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? If you're not grounded, man, that money will take you over for sure. So um, you're training all three of these guys. How old are they all? Typically about the same age? How old no, are they? No, Alex is like 20, 21. Tyson is 15. And EJ is 12, I think. Oh, okay, because I was just wondering, because I'm like, if you train some guys that are around the same age and say they eventually have to fight each other, nah, how does they're not that gonna work? Fight each other. Nah, they're not going to fight each other. So you, you try not to train people at about the same... Well, well, like like right now where I'm at in my life, I say I really only deal with professionals. Like, if some, like you know, I have a million people hit me up, you want me to train their kids, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, I tell them, go pro. Then you know, get them. some experience, you know what I mean? Get by five, ten and oh, then I, it'll be worth my time. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, because a lot of, to be honest with you, a lot of people can't afford me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and the people I'm locked in with, I'm locked in with because it ain't, it ain't about money. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, and then I can't spread myself thin. So, you know, that's, that's what it is right now. But Can we go back to Earl Spence for a second? Yes, sir. Like, people, you know, after the fight, a lot of people say, man, uh, man, uh, Crawford gave him his belts back. Um, I believe it's a thing where they order them new belts. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. But, you know, just to clear the air, you know, like, I don't know that part, but, you you know, you've seen fighting and you've been mm -hmm. around it. Like, what is the process that you know it to be as far as when they, like, with him losing the belts, now he get to keep them just for, like, like, like trophies, yeah, 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 for sure, that. yeah. That's all it is. That's yeah. all it is. And I and I and I, and I man, that, bro, I, bro, like, I heard my brother, I love him to death, but bro, Terrence Crawford, when he did that, bro, I had a newfound respect for that man, bro. Wow, so like, he, you ain't, I ain't never seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's I've never seen a right. man do that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. To do that openly like that, right, bro. The dude, er, I'm gonna be honest with you, Crawford. Uh, very impressive to me. I've been watching him ever since people have been comparing him to Earl. Um, mm -hmm. Six kids. A wife, you know, she's just normal, just like me and my wife. No, normal, for sure. Normal yeah, he not, people. He, he not Hollywood. Not, 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 not out here flash. Yeah, bro. bro I, listen, after rain, bro, I respect that dude, bro, because that dude, like, you know what I mean? Like, like bro, he impressive, bro. Cause to, to be able to have that type of money, bro, and to still stay grounded, bro, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't hang around. Like all you do is hang around other fighters. You know what I mean? From from you know, it ain't a blemish on your name out here, bro. That's impressive, and that's just keeping it a buck. A lot of people uh, alluded to the fact of Earl in the drinking situation too. They, they that's one of the things that they brought up to me when I would ask them mm -hmm. about this fight, like. He he in Omaha. This he, uh, man Crawford ain't got nothing up there. He can go in them heels. Ain't no distractions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just blowing him off because I my mind was straight on man Earl Steele. He, you know he, he he you know man down. You know I've been yeah, seeing yeah, all sure. these different things all this time. Mm -hmm. I didn't see no reason why I should stop. You know yeah. what I mean? But I also knew that he was very athletic. Uh, but Crawford he could change, switch hit, all those different things. We knew this going into yeah. this fight. We knew it. And I don't know, do you think that Earl might have underestimated or tried to fight the fight that he was preparing for when it was a year ago? To be honest with you, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's something you have to but ask him about. That's a mental about. state, you know that's what I mean? That's something you got to ask him about. I, I wouldn't have that, that answer, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of people do a lot of speculation, but it, you know, on certain things, I just don't say or ever say because I'm not Earl, you know what I mean? Like, that's I can't, that's real. It's like, it's just like, I can train Earl to be the strongest person. I can take another person and train them, but they don't have Earl's skill set. It don't mean I'm going to get the same result. That's yeah. why I, I pick and choose who I train. I'm not just training anybody because I want to be successful and I understand you have to have a certain type of skill set, certain type of mentality to be the best in the world. And let me say this, even with whatever hiccup, hiccups Earl done had, to still make it to where he made it in boxing is still 
You know what I mean? It's next level because some people box, don't drink, don't smoke, and they never made it to early level. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I'd be watching this guy, Hassan Campbell, right? He <laughs> talks about, he's talking about right now the, the, the text message that was sent out by, because we're talking about how noble uh, Crawford was, but it was a text message sent out to Wallow. Yeah, I seen that, yeah, I seen that. And it seemed like it was a little bit, and it could have been just him just messing with him, just having a good time. With yeah, but he shouldn't have posted that, though. Who shouldn't have posted it? Wallow. Wallow. Yeah. Wallow was locked up for he's real stump down. He'd been 22 years of locked up, or 20, over 20 years of locked up. Mm -hmm. He should know whether something's going to be, but maybe they just was playing. I don't know. I didn't read the text. But, boss, but of course you play, but you don't post screenshots on the internet. That's a female trait. Oh, yeah, bro. I've never done that in my life. That's a female trait. We're not doing that, bro. Yeah, what, unless you tell me here on the show, put it up when I talk, yeah. it ain't coming from yeah. me. Now, now the thing about it is, is that now if you had an op of somebody you had a discord with, I can understand that transpiring, but you dealing with somebody you're supposed to be cool with. Yeah. We're not posting our stuff on the I internet. I think Earl went on their show too, didn't he? Yes, he did. He went on their show as yes, well. Yes, he did, yeah. And 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 I think Bud kind of rebutted the fact of why would you why would you even post that man? Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be between me. and Nah, you. It, uh, I would think so. I don't know. Was it just saying that he? It was uh, some leading. I well, like, it didn't say. Well, true be told, from what I seen, he didn't say nothing incriminating or anything bad. But it's just the fact that you're you're, you're posting our screenshots. We don't come on, bro. It's just like me and you, just nah, me, we and we get cool, and then we start posting our personal conversation. That ain't nobody been. Yeah, this blogging and this interview thing is going to another level with, with when it comes down to trying to. I don't know what you get from that. I, I, I always like Wallow. I've never seen Clicks, him. He's never done likes, that before, though, have he? Clicks, likes, and views. But boss. I do this, but I ain't finna just put nothing yeah, out. Yeah, but your character different. I get it. Cause I ain't never just. You, you got to tell me. I got so many. T Babe, how many people call me and be like, e, you can call me out there like, e, I don't want you to put that part out. Mm -hmm. I'm be like, man, take that. You ain't got to put none of it out. I'm throwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I got you. I got you. Cause I, that's why but people, see, I'm the type of person. I'm not going to say nothing that I can't, can't say in somebody's on. face. That's real. Period, bro. Right, right. I'm not bro. I'm but like some it. people get so hyped in the discussion because of yeah. you know the the atmosphere and the way how we talk mm -hmm. they, that after they think about it, they're like, you know what? I shouldn't have got, said that. It's just you know, it just came out. Or some people feel like I don't want to hurt this person' feelings, so I'm not going to say that. No, nah, I respect it. You know what I mean? But this is the thing. We're gonna have, like when the camera's on, we're gonna have a certain conversation. When the camera's off, we're gonna yeah, have a certain exactly, conversation. Exactly. You know what I'm That's saying? What we always so do. as long as these cameras is on, you ain't ever got to worry about me saying <laughs> yeah, anything. Exactly. Then it don't that come I, back that I can, It ain't even about that because I'm the type of person, bro, I'm not gonna say nothing behind your back. I can't say to your face. Because I'm like that. Because if, And if a person out here to defend themselves, exactly. I'm not gonna speak on him. Speaking on him. That's but you're real. trained on this. And some people are not um, trained. They don't they need watch it. They need Right. Or they don't watch Or they don't watch Interviews Not and true. learn of how people. But I do podcasts, do so yeah, so. you know already yeah, what comes yeah, with it. Yeah, for sure. So well, you did do a podcast, and, and, and I had Earl on one time. We you talking did. About, yeah, 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 yeah. He wouldn't come on Boss Talk. Shout out to Earl Spence. You ain't <laughs> never been on my show. I done reached out to a lot of people. Bro, I'm, t I'm no, probably let me say this, bro. Go ahead, go ahead bro. <laughs> Get this shit off my chest. Get no, off your I, chest, brother. No, no I'm just now I'm gonna say I was the first person you ever did a podcast with, friend. Really? I was on. I think we probably went like an hour and thirty minutes talking about relationships, all type of stuff. But it was back in the day, though. But that's still. Hard. Yeah. I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah, I'm jealous. You shouldn't even brought that up. This interview finna be over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, I, I really like you know showing love to the city. I didn't reach out to a few of them that you don't get them all, but the ones you get, like you, God bless me with you. So I'd be so happy about that. I don't be worried about all that other stuff. Yeah, you know, it's just dope to get to link in with people like you and Black. Like I seen Black try to come under your conditioning. I mean, how was his uh? How was his... So uh, you train him? Wait a minute. Black? Now, Black said he was going to go over there and get that smoke a few years back. Uh, how it's was on it? the internet. Yeah, I know. How, pull it how, up. how was it, though? No. All right, so... From your perspective. So, 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 Black Fight Fan is the reason people know me. That's hard, man. I was training Earl. I wasn't going to the fights. I was minding my own business. I come in, train Earl, gone by my business. Nobody, in the, nobody, the only people knew I was training Earl was people that was at... In the inner circle right. and yeah. people that knew. Outside of that, I never told nobody I was training Earl Spence, and my family knew I was working with him. You know what I'm saying? And so, Black Fight fan, I don't know how he found out. <laughs> That's my boy. I man. don't know <laughs> how he found out. He hit me up one day, man. You, you Earl Spence, strength and nigga. I like, yeah, like what's up? He was like, I want to come work out with you. Now, I love you. now I ain't gonna lie. 
I, I took that challenge on because I like to show people that I'm the best at it. Like you can't you can't hang with me working out. Period. I don't think nobody can, right? So he came and worked out with me and I busted his head. He couldn't deal with it, could he? He nah, get out man. of He like, I ain't Bro, nah, listen, man. listen, this is no cap. Cause it takes me an hour to warm up. Ooh. Like if How I How long out, do you work out for? As long as I can go the whole like as long as I want. Like two, What's three hours. As long as somebody challenging me, I'm, a, I'm we gonna get it in. The long, as long as you uh, worked out for just going down. Probably, like, probably like four, five hours. That's hard, man. But that was not, that's when I was in New York. Okay, when you Yeah, when I was in New York at Wingate Park after I trying right. to do you some th- of the best again, in the world. Again, let me go back. You tough on people, man. Everybody can't work no five, six hours, nigga, run around here, nigga. <laughs> He don't Did train he? at people that long. No, no, no. no but he no. jump on people for that nah, hour. Nah, you go in there nah, with him, he gonna put nah, you to work. Nah, but yeah, so like, now nah, black man, we had did the warm up and I say, bro, we, he cut that out too. He edited it. I swear he edited it. He edited it. You know what I'm saying? So he warmed up for an hour. No, I had to, no, we did the workout, but that was the warm up. Oh, oh. oh. So, and I told him, I say, I say, I say, I say, uh, now it's time to work. He was like, nah, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go work, man. <laughs> you know I don't saying? blame him. I'd have left your yeah. butt up there too, boy. Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie. It's impressive for Black to be 200 some pounds, man. Yeah. he been losing and, weight lately. And doing what he was doing, like for real though. Yeah. Like, like to be doing pull ups. And cause I think we did like 100 and some pull ups, you know what I mean? Like, That's hard. We did like 100 pull ups, 100 dips, 100 push ups. How long ago was this? Then we did. It was a few years back, but I'm. Nah, yeah. the, the video on YouTube. Well, so we yeah, did like. How long, we did, how long ago was that? It may have been like 2017, yeah. 18. Yeah, it was oh, a while. Well, well, back, back like 200-some yeah. pounds time. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't lost like weight two, now. Yeah, he lost two, weight now. 230, 240 time. So now he could do a lot more. And so he did, so, so yeah, so we did 100, over 100 pull-ups, 100 dips, 100 push-ups, and 100 squats. And then we did another 150 push-ups, but it was like an extreme way we did it. Like, yeah. I don't know if you, you seen the video when we was down on the ground mm-hmm, mm-hmm, doing the star mm-hmm, diamond? Mm-hmm. That's a yeah. whole nother level, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, y'all throw. So, so we did that like three times and then I was like, yeah, it's time to start working. And he was like, nah, bro, I gotta go. <laughs> I said, I said, nah, don't run like smoke, it. man. I'm like, yeah, let's get to it. Man, I think that's dope, man. God done gifted you with a gift to help people, man, through, mm-hmm. you know, strength and conditioning, man. Um, man, like I said, what do you want to take this thing to next level? Ah uh, man, I just like I just like blessing people, like helping people. You know what I mean? Like, well, right now I'm coming out with a program, and the program that I'm coming out with coming out with is going to uh, be a six week program. Okay. And so what I'm doing is because I, I kind of use this say I say I've trained Earl, which is best in the world. Now it's time for me to train the world. Right? Hey. So since I can't train everybody, I'm putting out a a workout program called the Foundation to Strength. Okay. Because you got a lot of basketball players, a lot of football players. I've trained NFL, NBA. Like my nephew just went to the NBA, Mike Miles Jr. Man, wow. shout out. He got uh he, he went to he, he played for the Mavericks. Wow. That's hard. Yeah, he got drafted. He he come well, he didn't get drafted, but he got picked up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now he signed the contract. He's gonna be with Dallas Mavericks. So you see Mike Miles Jr. That's the boy that's my, cousin. That's my nephew. That's your nephew. Yeah, yeah. nephew. Yeah. That's boy nephew, boy. That's it. Yeah, that's my nephew playing for the Dallas Mavericks. So uh I can't train everybody at the same time, so I'm coming out with a program, and it's going to help everybody get their foundation right so as they're working out, they can get stronger. So I call it the foundation of strength. So I'm working on that. I'll be in touch with you about that. Call me. You know what I'm call saying? Yeah. Me, I want to get out. I want to bring you back on the show, too, when you launch it. Yes, sir. And just do stuff with you, man, to help push your brand. That's what yeah, we're Yeah, it's going to be a company Are call. you going to try it? Man, I do whatever, man. Don't try to run up on me. You looking over here like I want to get down. Try? Yeah, I so get down with him. Don't try to play me like I won't get down, nigga. I'll jump down there now. Yeah. yeah what you talking about? And it's gonna you be, stay it's, out of it. This me. Yeah. It's going to be, be called, uh, we're going to launch a brand called Wealthy. Man. Okay. Yeah, so it's W-H-E-A-L-T-H-Y. So wow. it's like healthy, but you put a W on front of healthy. Mm-hmm. So, and the, the really the company is, is dealing with health, but they also deal with uh, finance and teaching people how to be entrepreneurs. Shout out to my brother, Jake Taylor Jacobs. That's the guy that's uh, uh, the owner of the a biz code system. That's a whole nother. It's a black. Wow. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna plug you in with him, man. He's a, a young millionaire man wow. here, local. You know what I mean? And what he does is he buys businesses and takes them to seven figures. Damn, that's and he old. teaches black people. Like I said, a young black brother teach people how to take a company and make seven figures. You know, he's done it several times. Several that's time. what. That's what he does. So yeah. Wow, man. Like um, you what. 
okay, you can't talk. You not a part of making this happen. Somebody does something like a documentary or something on you. Um, what would you want it to be? How would you want it to look? Just just briefly. If somebody did a documentary on me, yes, and you weren't able to put your hand on, but you want them to know this about you, what would it be? It it would it, it would be that you can come from small beginnings in reference to, you know, having childhood trauma and then making it to being noticed as one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the world. You know, because God did this. This wasn't me. Wow. If it was up to me, I'd still be out there. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Top three. When God, when God got a different plan for you, you know. Because, mm. like I say, what I do now, like I say, every, every person that I've had with high blood pressure, off. Every person that I've had with diabetes, off. You know what I mean? And them, them conversations wow. that, you know, big farmer and people don't want you to start talking about that you can naturally get rid of these things. You know what I'm saying? It's mainly a lot has to do with what you eat. No, for sure. Diet and exercise. But, and in, but in today's time, you got to be careful because so much stuff got so much stuff in it. Right. Ketchup got sugar in it. And you can't, <laughs> you you can't grow your own stuff. People are not, you don't have the time to grow your own stuff. And then, and see, but see, our people, we eat to live. We don't. I mean, we don't eat to live. We live yeah, to eat. eat. Right. And that's our issue. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with <laughs> beans in here and there, but 95. I mean, 90 percent of what you eat should be real food at least. What are you eating? Let's just talk about today. You got up this morning. You ate breakfast. Maybe I don't know. No, I haven't ate yet. But what what are you going to eat? How's your day going to go on a good Thursday? Uh, what, so what so a regular day for me is watermelon. As soon as I, I get my yellow watermelon, make sure you got seeds in it. Do my watermelon first thing in the morning. Why? Then, huh? Why watermelon first thing in the morning? Well, because it hydrates you. Watermelon and cucumbers are the most hydrating things right. you can put in your body. So a lot of times we drink bottled water, right? But you might. I tell people, if you go into the store and buy a bottle of water, you might as well drink what you got after, after, after hydrating. Like, mm -hmm. you wasting your money. Unless you're going to boil it and then, you know, put it in a pitcher and put some lime in it to purify it and put your little uh, uh, pinch of him, pink Himalayan sea salt for, for the minerals, do it yourself. Alkaline, if you want alkaline water, just use lime and lemons. Do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? But we've been trained how to eat so bad for so many years. But at the, at the end of the day, we got to think about it. It was a process of just going with what we knew. Our parents did the best that they could. Just even when you go to parenting, you know what I mean? As you, but as you know better, you do better. You know what so I mean? Watermelon so watermelon and what? So I would do watermelon, I would do three to four boiled eggs. I get my eggs from the farm. I do not get eggs out the regular store. I get it from the farm. And then I eat broccoli sprouts and microgreens. That's breakfast? That's breakfast, yeah. How many eggs do you have? I eat about three or four. Three or four. And mm -hmm. then lunch, what? Micro beans, where is that? Microgreens, Green. Micro greens. So it's so so it it would just be like so it would be like arugula right you ever seen arugula uh -huh. so it would be the beginning stage of arugula so a lot of the microgreens have more nutrition than the full grown yeah uh, uh vegetable mm. you know what I'm saying so when you eat your vegetables when you get the microgreens they have more uh phyto phytonutrients in them than the big ones you know what I'm saying wow. so I eat broccoli sprouts instead of the full broccoli mm -hmm. because the broccoli sprout has more sulforaphane in it. Which is that's a whole nother conversation. What so fine does to the body, you know what I'm saying? But wow. when you start saying these things, and I know you posting this on YouTube, I can't say it. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? That's a yeah. conversation you got to have outside, outside of. of you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so okay. So, are you the person? And that I eat that, and, and I don't mean to say that. I don't mean to cut y'all, but I, that's I eat that twice a day. Twice, and a that's day. it, and I'm done. That's I it. Yeah, I won't eat see, nothing else. See, that's what I was gonna ask. So you. I eat that same meal twice a day. So the watermelon too. No, no, I eat the watermelon all once. once. Yeah. But then um, some people feel like, because I've heard before, and trainers have told me this before, mm -hmm. you're supposed to eat um, every two hours to keep your metabolism. That's, that's only if you're having blood sugar issues, like when you got diabetes and mm. like that. If you're a regular functioning person with no issues, in my opinion, no. So it doesn't speed up. It's people don't need to eat that. No, you speed up your metabolism. No, you don't need to. You need to drink uh, brewed green tea if you want to speed up your metabolism. I'm giving free game right now. Brewed green tea. Green tea on the stove. Brew it. And that speeds it up. That speeds up metabolism. But you got to be consistent with it. It's not like 
if if boss all went and turned the lights off, you turn it off. Your metabolism don't work like that. You got you to be you got exactly. You got to be consistent. So do the green tea with a little bit of with a pinch of cinnamon. And what you eat twice a day, because I know you get a protein from your eggs, mm -hmm. so you don't eat meat. No, I eat meat too. Yeah, Pause. okay. <laughs> so uh, because you said you eat that twice a day, but you didn't say okay. I ate so so today, so what right? happened is so what happened is. I try to, I'm, so every day I mainly eat the eggs with the broccoli sprouts and the microgreens. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my go-to. That's right? your basic. That's my basic because eggs, when it comes to protein being bioavailable to the body, eggs is the the best bioavailable protein naturally that you can put inside your body that and has you all the essential. Yolk. Exactly, for sure, because that's where all the nutrients is, is inside of the yolk. Really? Mm -hmm. So I take out the yolk sometimes because I'm think people talk about they, it. They talk about blood cholesterol. No, don't right. believe that because so what happens is is that when people don't want you to be healthy, what they do is they put money behind certain things to put it out on the internet to make people mm -hmm. believe it. And so now you got to come see us because you're not getting what you need and your body is not functioning the way properly that it needs to because you're not giving it what it need. But the people on the back end who's funding these people is giving these people the money to say, hey, you're a doctor. I need you to say this. I need you to say that. So you're telling me you eat all the egg yolk? Every day. You talk, you be taking my egg yolks out and throwing away time but you make That's what I've always No, I give you some yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I give you my egg yolks. Yolks. Okay, so watch this. Let's I do go both. here. I no, do, no, 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 no. So let's go here. I mean yolk today. So watch this. So watch <laughs> this. Watch this. Your hormones. Your hormones. Yeah. Uh huh. Right? Yeah, your libido. Yeah. Okay. It takes cholesterol to produce the hormones. Yeah. Okay. Right? Okay. So where are you getting your cholesterol from? Your good cholesterol. Where are you getting it from? I'm asking a question. Y'all could help me Avocado out. Avocado has cholesterol. Avocado is phenomenal for you. Okay. It has glutathione, all that. Eggs, for sure. Eggs. Eggs and farm-raised animal protein that has not been shot up with all this nonsense. That's why I get it. Now, I do eat animal protein. I don't eat meat. I eat, pause. I eat animal protein, right? But I get it from somebody that has a farm, because they don't shoot they 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 animals up and put all that that nonsense in them. But when you go grocery shopping, like if I go, I only go grocery I know, shopping at I know, a place I where know, they have farm raised <laughs> I know, animal but protein. I'm saying like for regular people mm -hmm. who go to the grocery store, when I go and buy my meat, especially chicken. Mm -hmm. um, you can see like okay that these are smaller so these I know haven't been like shot up yeah like the ones over look here look like <laughs> this huge you so you can sort sneaking of sneaking around looking at the chicken so you can sort of you know spell and guess and be like okay this one might be a little bit more healthier for me yeah because they're smaller they look like real chicken rather than yeah these I, huge. I only buy a smart chicken it's okay. an organic chicken. No, okay. I'm giving I'm giving people some game. Mm -hmm. I, I only buy smart chicken. That's what oh. I buy. So when but I go to the store, not everybody can afford to smart. go to the farm. It's not and go. cheap. No, it, no, it's in the store. Oh, okay. It's in a well, specific yeah. store though. Oh, okay. here in you, Dallas, you it's, can't you can't go to Kroger's and get. Oh no 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 no. See, what not everybody Alberson? can do that. Nope. What about Tom? Where you stay at? If you don't mind, I'm around what this area. area. Around this area. Yeah, you had to go to Duncanville. That it's in Duncanville. Yes, sir. What store is Cox Farms. I got to go over the Cox farm. Don't talk, don't feed me not now. No. <laughs> give me, don't you do it? How about salmon? Don't you do it? I get it from Cox Farms. You don't? Don't you give me now another? Oh, watch it. And it's way more expensive. Big guy. Big guy. How my chicken taste? It's good, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but it's and, way more expensive too. No, it's not. Besides, it's the regular price you get from the store. Yeah. You just need okay. to make that trip. Thank you so much, yeah. man. I appreciate you. I'm going to be all right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me say this. So, but, so what I do is usually that's my normal regimen, but I understand that the animal protein, especially red meat, it has a lot of beneficial things. that it. That, so I try to eat that at least once a week. I don't eat red meat. Mm -hmm. What I red meat do you eat? Uh, I eat the, uh, from, the, from the farm. I eat it from the farm. Like steak? Steak. Yeah, all that, yeah. Ground Steak, beef. ground beef, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I get it from only one source, though. Yeah, yeah. If it's not from from, from that store, so I don't buy it. So when you travel, that store is not with you, what do you get? I, I eat whatever, be honest. That's why I said, remember I, remember I said 90%, yeah. 85 to 90% of what you do. Try to do right. It's not about what you do 
here and there. It's about what you do the majority of the, the time. Majority. So like, if I'm like, so if I'm on the go, like I am today, right? And 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 because usually I'm at the crib. You know what I'm saying? I got you cook my cook a lot. I, I cook every day. I have my regular regimen I do. But like I say, right now since I'm moving. I got to get the boys something to eat. So I got to stop somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So when I do that, I just bless my food. Like I was told, you know, my grandmother, I was told, and I gone by my business. But that's not what I do every day and all the time. I like, that's like, if, I, like if y'all invited me over to dinner, right. I'm not going to be so, I man, know where this would come from. No, nah, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. I think what I like about you, man, is you 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 really said 90% of the time you try right. to eat the right thing. And, no, and for you, sure. And, and But you don't. Criticize people when that ten percent come. No, you know, that, no, that yours is yours flip. Yours flip. I'm talking to the yours my man Yours is ninety percent like, and ten percent healthy. That's no, what so yours. Don't I don't go there. Saying that, so yes, I'm gonna work on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm eating yes, my egg yolks again. I'm going to get them from where you get yours at. Yeah, I'm gonna go in. But the ten percent shouldn't be a ten percent every day. The ten percent should be like ten percent <laughs> once a month, right? No, it's just whenever. No, you just know, just man? whenever. Like like like. So you cook the food when I cook it at the house. I'm gonna say it like this: If you doing, if you eating right Monday through Friday, man, do what you want to do on the weekend. See, see, he's a good guy. I like this guy right here. You can, yeah. Do you do protein shakes? Yes, do do? I do. Yeah. I only get it from one source, and that's True Nutrition. See, yeah. I and these folks are gonna one. give me a dime, and I'm giving it out there. You know, True Nutrition. But you because theirs to have right. more natural. Exactly, and 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 the thing about them, and the thing about them, they're 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 uh. Third party tested, mm. so they allow other people to test their product okay. to make sure that what you're getting is what you're actually getting. And okay. a lot of companies don't have that type of integrity. Yeah, mm. man. I, I like I said, I'm so glad God done blessed me with you. Yeah. But then, like I say, the the, uh, the DeSoto Farmers Market. That's where I get uh, my eggs from. I get my animal protein from Cox Farms. Seems like you're having a good time with it too. You make it fun, like. You know what I'm saying? It sound like you over there cooking and having a great meal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Making it fun and exciting. Well, well it, because you got to think about it like, it's just like if I'm in a relationship and I'm pursuing a woman, right? Mm -hmm. If she cooking me fast food, I mean, if she give me fast food every day, I'm going to look at her like, say, because my grandma raised me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm used yeah. to cook food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to be coming in. I'm hearing bags every day. Every day. <laughs> to feed me. No, 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 no. I need to understand that this was made with love. Right. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? No, that's hard. That's hard. No, nah, real talk. Ahead, you that's that. the way I was grown and raised, so. Did you have a question? No, no, no. That's it. We, I have questions after okay, we get done. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, man, like I said, man, I, uh, top three um, uh, boxes of all time since you were in the boxing. You know how we do Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Top three boxes of all time. In my opinion, this is my yes. opinion. Your opinion. No. Got to put Floyd Mayweather in there. Right. Mm -hmm, definitely. Hold on, you want to do new era, old era? It don't matter. All time, this is all anything, time. all everything. Right, I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna say so. I'm gonna say Floyd Mayweather. Uh huh. I'm gonna say Gerald McCullough. Okay. Okay. And Benoit Hopkins. Mm. Wow, you like Benoit? Yeah, I don't like his the way I know outside of the ring. He, everybody <laughs> don't like him, but I'm just talking about as a fighter. As a fighter, I, I actually yeah. liked him as a fighter. Wow. Yeah, I liked wow. him as a fighter. Man, I think that's hard. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out, you know, for training and trying to get themselves together like you done helped me out today here? So the the men have to hit me up at trap I mean at Blu ray fitness. Blu ray fitness, B L U E R A Y fitness on Instagram. You can DM me, I answer everybody. And the women, trap fitness with pretty girls. It's all one word. Trap wow. fitness with pretty girls. So I, I have some for women and I have some for men. Man. Mm. Man. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, man. Noble, man. Like I enjoyed this interview. Think I got something out of it. You know, a lot of yes, me, sir. I'm not a rapper. I do need to condition my body though. Yeah. You know, I love to talk about the rap. It's this just year. health and strength. Like health I always say, I want you to be healthy so you can be with us for as long as God permits. No, for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, but I'm gonna eat what a little bit more egg yolks, a little bit more stuff going to change around the house. I yeah. have been giving you a lot so of egg yolks recently. I don't recently. know what's going on, man. So don't stop. But you got to get the exercise now, brother. I got Thank to, you. man. Exercise. I like, it, it goes hand in hand. But I, I how much <laughs> uh, How much exercise? Okay, if you're walking, how much? I would say for my brother right yeah. here, I would have him doing 100 push ups a day, 100 oh, squats a day. That's so easy. 100 yeah, squats a day. But you haven't done in a while. Yeah, I need I'm to just start. saying, I'm just saying, That'd minimum, bare minimum. 100, 100 push ups a day, 100 squats a day. You do grass drills and stuff? Grass drills. Like you when mean? you get out. Like boot camp type yeah. of thing. Like yeah. burpees. 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 Yeah, burpees. Yeah, burpees. Oh, for sure, burpees. Them burpees, hell. Though. Yeah, now, nah, I don't care what type of shape you're in. 
You gotta do the best. So things. just walking is not. Oh, enough. they hell anyway. What you say? Like, burpees. I don't care. It's how, a full body I don't care, I don't care how in shape somebody is. If they say they like burpees, something wrong with. It. <laughs> <laughs> so um, walking is not enough. No, in my opinion, no. My personal opinion, yeah, I'll no. be walking. That ain't enough. No, that's that not enough. Just you need, you need to do strength training, resistance training. Wow. Because you got to think about it. The older we get, especially for men, our testosterone go down. You know what I'm saying? And the best thing for that is, is squats and deadlifts. You know what I mean? Then you lose bone density, everything. You know, your muscles preserve your body. But then some people feel like, okay, when I start to ache and hurt and this and that. That's a part of it. Well, you need I to be stop. putting, that's a part of it, number one. And then you need to be, make sure you're putting the right things in your body, the anti-inflammatory that, mm. you know, that'll help your body. Then you need to understand how to recover. Then you understand rest is good. Because see, a lot of people, what they do is they're working out. Then when they get home, later on, they're on the phone all night. You need to go to sleep. Your body rejuvenates itself. It repairs itself at night. So instead of scrolling through Instagram and Facebook, while a lot of people have insomnia, you're supposed to put your phone down an hour before you go to sleep anyway. Mm. Wow, boy, you something else. So man. a lot of people don't even have a lot of rest. And right. then a lot of people, think, another thing is people are eating too late. You see what I'm saying? So if you're eating late at night before you go to sleep, guess what your body is doing instead of repairing itself? It's digesting food. Digest, yeah. And, and that's why a lot of people eat them for this. If, I, if I'm wrong, do this. Get Eat on a full stomach, go to sleep and wake up and tell me how you feel. You know what happens when I eat before I go to sleep? For some reason, I, I can't understand this. Why do I wake up starving? I wake up and I'm be hungry, but if I don't do that- You're not starving, you, you know. But you, if I don't do that, I'm not hungry. But watch this, you're not starving. What it is is that you need to hydrate. Is that what it is? That's how it is. You need to hydrate. When I wake up, because you think about it, you've been fasting all night. Just need to hydrate. That's all it is. Like me, say I drink coconut water after coconut. I buy the actual coconut. That's God water. Mm hmm. Yeah. I drink. I call it God water. I drink that at least it's sixteen. Healthy. At least sixteen ounces every day. Yeah. Wow. Got coconuts. All my people walking in. Yeah. I, I eat coconut water. Pop it on. Boom. Put it in. Put it in the refrigerator. When I drink it, it's refreshing. My son can't stand it, but it's good for you because it, it got all the uh, electrolytes, potassium, everything your body need. I grew up drink, doing all of that because in Jamaica, that's all we have. We exactly. Drink a yeah, lot of yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you are. You already know. She definitely always drinking that coconut water, getting the coconut. Do y'all like go back to Jamaica and we just came back? Just got back. Oh, okay, that's cool. So y'all get the coconuts when you up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big green ones. Uh. Yeah, see, I go to uh, out here. I don't buy it because I don't see a lot of. No, nah, go to Central Market. They have it. Yeah, and it tastes sweet. Go to Central Market. I'm telling you, right there, I'll send the fire. No, that's something. Now that's that, something, that's another place I do. I do. I do go to Central Market. You something else? You always you searching for these places, making sure you go to the right place. I have, bro. Listen, that's these, listen, and my man, listen. When you they got the lab meat now, they got yeah. the lab chicken now. It's approved. Mm -mm. So this ain't even real chicken at all. This they done cloned mm -hmm. this chicken. But you ain't saying it. They done cloned. I don't be looking at it like that. They got it yeah, in there. Yeah, Impossible Meat. I've seen Impossible okay. Meat and all of that sort Step. of stuff. See, here we go. See, we, we finna. Yeah, we, so we watch can't it. talk about that. Hold on, so go get my channel shut. Hold on, now. watch <laughs> it. Nah, nah, it's not even that. It's not even that, right? So a lot of people go vegan, think they doing the right thing, right? right? Okay, first of all, most vegans gonna be vitamin B twelve deficient. So if you're gonna be if you're gonna go vegan, first of all, you need to go get you a, a plant based B twelve, which they do have them, which will get you what you need, right? But you start eating those, oh, that's that's processed too. Mm -hmm. oh, the yeah, impossible. That, that's that's processed mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Because go see who funded them. Wow. His first night start with Bill. I'm going to let you say the I last I already know who it is. Because the first time That's who funded Impossible. So, right. what's it's that money, money making venture. He making money off of it. Man. Nah, it ain't, it's, it's it not even that. Money, man. If he funding it, you already know it's not. He yeah, it's not real. Yeah, it, 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 it ain't 100. It ain't 100. But you know the funny thing, when um, nutrition became a trend, so to say, and everybody was like, I'm vegan, I'm vegetarian, all of mm -hmm. that. I remember growing up and people saying, I'm vegetarian. In my mind, I'm thinking, everybody who's vegetarian is supposed to be healthy and skinny and whatever, and but I would see some people who overweight are Overweight vegans, right, overweight vegetarians. I could never understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some people just eat, but they don't exercise, so. Yeah. I just feel like you have to do both, in my personal opinion. Yeah. You need to have a combination of both. Wow, man! Thank you for coming on the show, man. You yes, one sir. of the live ones, man. I, I I hope everybody understand why I brought this guy on the show. Blu-ray uh, is uh, Earl Spence, former 
I say farmer because y'all really y'all talk now and y'all friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, y'all just yeah. don't don't Having do the training together. Right, y'all don't have yeah. a business right relationship for us. It's workout. Yeah, I sure hope to see y'all get back together. Yeah, man. we would love that. I no, love that. I would love. I would. I would love for it too for yeah, sure. That'd yeah, be hard because sure. you yeah. got skin in the game anyway. No matter yeah. if you with him or not, you with him. Yeah, for sure. So man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, I we love you, brother. Appreciate that. Blue Ray is a boss talk affiliate now. He's been on the show, y'all. He he one of them guys, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. I talk about everything. Though, so you I know. like that. Yeah, I talk, I like I talk about you can't miss me on the conversation. Yeah, I was gonna get into God, but we'll never get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know already. I know that's you. Enough, that's that's part two. Yeah, you got to come, come back. back and so I'm, I'm rocking with it. For yeah, sure. because we gonna rock out, man. Well, you that's what I do every week. I ain't got no job. Ooh, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga, <laughs> Take it, man. This been another great scene with the boss talk. What a what a boss is talk. And we out.